So welcome back to the shop, friends. I have got an exciting video for you guys today. I'm, I'm going to let you guys share in my excitement because I have no idea what are in these three boxes. Actually, I have some idea because these came from David uh, in South Carolina. Remember last week, we had that amazing unboxing with all the vintage tools. Well, I woke up this morning. What do you think I found on the porch? Three very heavy flat rate boxes from David in South Carolina. So I thought we would cho choose one today. We'll open it up. I have no idea what's inside, but this is always exciting because David sends the coolest, coolest stuff. So what I'm going to do today is uh, we'll start with the biggest, heaviest one. We're gonna change some things up this time. Last time I had some bad focusing problems and mo a lot of you said, I'd rather look at the tools than at you anyway. So we'll just bring you up close with a good camera. All right, so how we're gonna do it is uh, we'll open it up with the fabulous Benchmade 940. Of course, I'm a Benchmade fanboy, no question. We'll open everything up over here and then we'll bring everything out one at a time. We get to see it together. I have no idea of what's in here. All right, let's, oh, there's a, look at this. What we got here? Now, if I had to guess, this looks like a welding rod case. Paul Meadow State Armory. Well, that's a good start, isn't it? What have we got going on in there? Oh, goodness, look at that. This is, I'm actually glad to have this case right here because I don't have a, uh, <laughs> I'm getting excited. I don't have a uh, waterproof container. But it's just the gift that keeps on giving uh, to keep my, uh, I need to stay on focus here, to, to keep my uh, welding rod uh, dry. What is this here? This is a long screwdriver of some sort. What's on the end of it? I have no idea what that is. That's very, there is a note towards, let's go back on it. What is that? That is a, it's got a crazy tip on it there. I don't even know if I can, if we can get that in the focus there, let me bring you in here, see if, see if anyone can figure this out. It's, it looks like a regu regular one, but it's got something else going on. I don't know what that is. We're going to have to, we'll set that aside. Oh, it does this too. It's got some plunger action going on. I don't know. Let me know on that one. That's a, I'm going to have to look into that. That's a, that's a mystery. So we've got a, this looks like, a, is that a Chicago old cutlery? Looks like a, oh, Ontario. Ontario, now this is USA, USA made one. Look at that. Oh man, that's, that's gonna take a while to get that sticky off. That is a, that looks like a butcher's knife. We got here, oh, th this is really nice. I, I love, this is a real treasure to me. I love to get these old handles. I don't use them because, isn't that nice? Back in the day, uh, when they used, actually used to design tools that were, that were meant to work with the body, to work with the craftsman, to work with the hand, instead of what looks cool from the marketing department with lots of rubber grip and orange and flashy and all of that. And, and to have these old ones, this is really kind of a lost art. I would never use this but, uh, as, as a handle on a tool, but I would use it as a template to make my own because these, they're just hundreds and hundreds of years with a lot of these of evolution designing that and look at the label just look at that it's got an indian head on it indian bow hickory indian fire saskatchewan tennessee we'll skip all, all of that and of course you know probably old growth, growth hickory which we just don't have around so much anymore that's really cool and well good grief david you do a good job with your wrapping i'll give you that that's a drywall saw uh, nothing really super interesting there. Pretty much standard, just an old one. What in the world have we got in here? Could it be files? Old files? Hard to find good files anymore. Oh, it, it is. So we've got, oh, this is a nice set too. Triangles, these look like, uh, if they've got the red tang on them, if you're, if you're finding those, they're probably uh, Simmons. Uh, probably the best files ever made. And these are in good shape too. Simmons Triangle Files, I would have to guess. Oh, this one's new. There's a Mill Bastard. That's a Nichols, but that's a USA made Nichols. means the hardness goes all the way through. These are really uh, worth a lot to me. Look at that. And th this is the most useful file there is, is the, is the, the what's that, probably a 10 inch, 10 inch Mill Bastard file. 
is if I had to choose one file that I could have, that would be the one. Yep, that's a 10, the 10 inch is what you want. And these are USA made nickels. I wonder where you found these, David. And they're in new condition. They're a little, they've got a little surface rust on them, but that doesn't affect. Look at that. That's a nice set right there. That last a guy, that that last most guys that are not machinists and stuff, probably a lifetime. Uh, a nice set like that. Man, if you ever come across these, and these all better Simons. If I had to look, well, we got to keep moving there. But that, boy, that's nice. That is a really great set. Well, that was the gift. Uh, that was a good gift that I would have been happy with that uh, that orange container all by itself, not having one of these. All right, let's keep going here. Oh, interesting. So we have a zipper pouch. What in the world? What in the world is this? That looks like a military sort of safety, a safety clasp. Another one, it almost looks like a, it's just some really nice, some really nice hardware. Look at these rings. They're welded too, welded rings for, I wonder if maybe this buckles or something, this was probably cut off of a military a harn, oh look at that. That's really interesting because you know my belt buckle, of course, let me show you here, I've got it here. My belt buckle that I, that I love so much, this is you know the rigger style or the wildland style. This is the same thing without the, the D-ring on it. Isn't that cool? Now what we need to do is we need to make, this could be like, this is for when you're not jumping out of helicopters for the common man. This would be like the commons man with the rigger belt there. But isn't that, but see, they're the same. They're the same, the military style with the biters on there. Very, very cool. That's a unique belt buckle right there. I, I like that. That's worth the price of admission for the box right there. That is cool. So just a whole bunch of D-rings. These will come in handy because I do want to do some leather work. Um, I have uh, Someone requested that we do a, a common man's or a poor man's intro leather working uh, tool, tool set. And I might just do that. I might just do that because I don't have very many things myself. So that's cool. So that will be, I'll put that in there with my, I keep a box of hardwares and, and trinkets and, and buckles and different things. A lot of the things I got from my grandfather uh, for future projects when I want to build things. It's really fun. Sometimes you can find a piece of hardware and it's like that buckle and it's so inspiring that you uh, end up building something around it. All right, so this is, oh, this is interesting. This is a cross, well, I don't know what you call this. I haven't seen one like this. It is a, cr um, what do you, oh, I forget, it's escaping me. But what you have is you have, uh, maybe somebody can tell me, you have the, the point that comes down here. These are used for uh, uh, cross-cut saws for the guys that worked on them and sharpened them for straightening them and stretching and, and manipulating metal. So you have one going this way, and then you, want, you have this one going the opposite way, like that. So you can, if you're, depending on which way you're we're moving metal with the saws, you can change it and change that direction back and forth without having multiple hammers. What this particular one is for, I don't know. I'm gonna have to go to my book and do some research on that, but that's, a, that's nice. And the handle, it's, although it's loose, it might be salvageable. Maybe I should do a video on how to, when you have a handle that's marginally loose like that, how to fix it. That's a cool, that's a really cool hammer. That's a, that's, that's a really cool hammer we got here. Oh, we got some more of those gloves that I like. I, Brian was coveting my gloves, uh, and I so I gave him um, some of uh, the uh, second pair. And uh, Brian's the recipient of a lot of, of a lot of tools. <laughs> I tell you, you can't have too many of these gloves. I, these are very nice. Look at that! What in the world is that? So that's a pair of those gloves I had last time. This is a hammer. It's got some writing on it. I don't know. SLB, I don't know what that for. You know, my first, my initial instinct right away is something with a railroad or mining three pounds, it says on it. Again, we're going to have to come back to that. I don't know. I have no idea what that is. Whoops, I'm dropping things. I've got some bubble wrap here. What in the world is that? Is this going to be a, I think this is a drill. It's the, the original, the little rotary drills that we've, We've, we've seen that. Oh boy. Oh, that's a nice one, isn't it? 
That looks like it's brand new. Wow. Oh, it's a Stanley. It's a Stanley number 60624A in, it's like, you got to be kidding me. Does it have the original bits in it? What are those? They're brand new. I don't know what those bits are for. Boy, I'm totally stumped on it, but they're brand new. They're, they don't even have the polish knocked up. This is, I don't think this has ever been used. Again, we're gonna have to, are there more in there? Look at the wooden threads. I've never seen anything like this before. To see one that's brand new, let me show you my old one. I've got my old one here and it doesn't look anything like, oh, now it's not here. I guess I had it in the other shop. It doesn't matter. Brand new, but the one I have, the, the chuck's all kind of worn out and it's, uh, the, it's, it's really, oh, it's tight. I wish I could listen to this. It's, I can't believe it. I can't believe that I'd ever see one of these that's brand new, unused. Mine, as I said, mine are all wobbly and they're shaky. This one is like a, like a precise machine. And then the, my ch the chucks are kind of stripped out, and they're, I mean, they're just, they're just used to death. Look at that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That is cool. Man, that's cool. I want to shop where you shop, David. Here we have a, this is, oh, this is cool. This is a, this is really neat. This is a rawhide mallet. Look at that. Look at that. Garland, Maine. They still build these today. And a, a rawhide mallet is what you would use. Look at, you can see it's like a dog chew toy. It's, it's rawhide all wrapped up in a circle and then uh, screwed together, put on a handle, and it's used for doing um, precision work. Anything or anything that you're working on that's delicate, if you needed to tap on something and you didn't want to, to mar it. Some woodworkers even use these. These are really popular with woodworkers and timber framers. Uh, to use as a mallet because it's it's forgiving. This is the sacrificial piece and it makes their, their chisels last longer. That is another fascinating helm. This is gonna stay for sure. My hammer collection, which I just tool, pared down, is getting significantly bigger. That's neat. That's really neat. There's a, there's a long history of those, those, uh, those deals. Oh man, you can't have too many of these guys. You go to buy a drill bit like this, what size is that? That's a big one. Nice too for, for common guys is to have a normal size uh, shank on there so you don't have to have a huge drill. That's a, it looks like an inch and a, inch and a sixteenth inch. And that's a one inch. That's a one inch drill bit right there. That's a big one. That's when they really knew how to make drill bits. Very handy, very usable. Oh, that's, I don't think I have a one inch drill bit. Not, not for drilling metal. And there's more in here. We've got some smaller ones. These old drill bits are, are pretty, uh, pretty uh, good to have. These are all the same size and they're brand new. That's another good size as well. What's that one? We got this here is probably, what's, what is that? Three quarters? Three, no, hat, qu what is that? Quarter? No, what am I thinking there? Three eighths or five, six, seven, seven sixteenths looks like. Good size too. Very nice. I'll bet these are USA made. Very nice. Can't, cannot have too many drill bits, that's for sure. Man, this is a good box right here. What's this? This is taped up to some sort of a specialty angled tool. Boy, I hope you have as much fun finding all this stuff as I do unboxing it, David. This is really, really neat. This, I don't know what, what that is. Something very specialized. Oh, you got me on that one. They are they look cool though, don't they? What in the world is that? Is it some medieval form of dentistry torture tool? Who knows? Maybe something to do with leather work? Can you see it? It's kind of it's kind of got a, a diamond pattern to it and it's got the bend in it. There's a big one and a little one. Oh, there we go. Mystery solved. It is. It's for, it's got, it's a needle for sewing something. It's got the eye in it right there. The eye and the needle. It must have, I'll bet it's got something to do with leather work and working through something that's really hard because of the way it's got that chisel point on it. It's got to be for leather. It's got to be for heavy, heavy duty leather work. 
Well, that might, that might come in handy there pretty soon. We got something here. This is a heavy one. This is, I could just do this all day. This is pretty, pretty, pretty fun. What is, what in the world is this? Can't get in it. I should know what this is. This is a craftsman. Is this for, uh, is this for taps? No, I should know what this is. Maybe it's just an adjustable wrench. Yeah, that's probably what it is. It's probably just adjustable wrench. This is USA made Craftsman, the 4381. Back when Craftsman made good stuff. You can feel the quality. You don't see that anymore with their stuff, unfortunately. Look how long the rubbers lasted. You know, the funny thing about some of the stuff that David sends is it's, it, it's like unused. That's a neat tool. That's a thing to have right there to throw in your glove box as an emergency tool. You can just about get a hold of anything with that. I do like that. That's nice. Ooh, this is a good, this is promising. Little boxes, little cardboard boxes. Back, some of those old boxes in the old day, they put as much effort in the design of the packaging as they did the, the tool itself. Everything being elegant and nice. And, what are these? China marking. These are marking. I don't, I don't want to ruin that box. China markers. I don't think this is made in China crummy, crummy stuff. I think this is something that's old China markers. It's a green and a black. It's just for mark, marking your work. I've never seen this before, but I wonder, it looks like there's a, I'm gonna have to look into this, but there's like a spiral paper. That must be how you keep, you know, not sharpen it, but keep it, uh, keep a point on it is by unraveling that. You must unravel that uh, to keep the tip exposed. That is neat. That's very nice. I, I don't like those big, the American ones, you know, the big keels, I think they call them for marking lumber because they, they have a huge edge and they're not, they're not, um, uh, you can't do any type of precise marking with them. These have a fine point on them and they're actually quite nice. Oh, it's just charming, isn't it? In a lifetime supply of them, if you look after them. Right there, those will go in the shop. I'll use those, actually, I'll use those all the time. Man, all these are things that I just never have se even seen before with the box. Right there, USA Empire. 1992-93, so not super old. China markers, huh, that's interesting. What else do we have here? Oh, another. Always a nice surprise in these little zipper pouches. The black zipper pouch. Oh, square nails. Square nails and a good set of them. My grandfather gave me a set of these. In a, I've got them in an old Folgers can and these are cool. Look at that. I had enough of them to do a project. I've, I've, I've got a set of big ones, like, I don't know, close to a 16 penny, but this is kind of a medium size. How cool would that be, be to do a project and use those square headed nails in it? You can't buy those anymore. Man, and a whole bunch of them too. There's probably several pounds of them in there. That's cool. Square nails. I've been, I save nails. Whenever you go to a garage sale, or a junk sale and they have bucket loads of nails. Have you priced nails lately? Or screws? They're expensive. So if you can buy a, a 20 pounds of galvanized nails for a few dollars, man, jump on that. Save those things. As they said back nails were so uh, expensive back in the day, they all had to be handmade one at a time. When you guys would move out west and when they use their nails to build a shelter, they'd burn it down and sift through the ashes and save the nails and take them with them for their next build. Here we have a rigid, heavy duty, a small pipe wrench. USA made, this is a good one, and not too worn out. When you're looking at these, if you see the used ones, if they have sharp teeth on the corners right there, that means they've got a lot of life in them. You can actually, you could, with that little file, these little triangle files that we have, you can actually get in there and, and re Re, kind of repurpose or rebuild those things, make them sharp. But that's a little, a nice little handy one. I don't have a good one like this. All I had one is like a Chinese crummy one. So that will go in the plumbing box. Nice size. Nice size. That's a good one. That's one of the key, one of the key tools. 
What in the world is this? Good thing we've got a deal. Defense Personnel Support Center, National Stock Number, Textile Plain Weave Flat Nylon, one inch. So this is just a 1983, 100% nylon, a super high quality nylon strap for projects. You could, for sewing or lots of different things. That's really nice. There's a lot, how many feet are on there? That's gotta be a bunch. That's gotta be a bunch, I don't know. It says it, I'm not seeing it. Green, OD nylon. That'll be something, so we'll go, we'll keep that in the, in the leather Nixon knickknack box there for future projects. Oh, we got another one, always a good sign. O-R-A, we've got another zipper pouch. There's something cool inside. Oh, another, <laughs> another, another, <laughs> another grommet machine. Man, oh man. Oh, we got two of those. I never thought I'd see one, let alone two. We have to do a, we have to do a grommet project. No, you may remember, I'll go over here to the last time. Are they the same? Are they the same or are they, are they different? Are they different sizes? Maybe. Maybe one a little bit big. This one might be bigger. I don't know. <laughs> I, got, I got, got two now. That's for, if you're just joining us, that's for making, putting grommets, uh, like in a piece of canvas. Let's say you wanted to do a, a tarp and you could put, uh, put these grommets and smash them down in there and, and have a way to, to tie it down. Um, that's, uh, let me get this mixed up right there. That's, a, that's pretty cool. That's very exciting. Somebody's going to be the lucky recipient of that because I certainly don't need two of them. Another, another pouch. Whoa. Where do you find this stuff, David? This is, these are, this is some sort of a, of a latch. Is there another side? There it is, right there. These are nice. These are really nice. So this is a, a type of a latch. This, this is nice. This is a type of a latch uh, that you can use, use when you need to pull something tight. I'll move my, move my hands right there. So let's say you, you had something like a, a you're going to build an aluminum box or a wood box and you want it to pull, the, uh, pull down with some tension. You put this on one side and as that loops through there, it's bolted through there. This has a kind of a cam action. See that right there? Cam action and we'll pull that tight. High quality. Very, very nice. You just can't hardly buy hardware like that anymore and to, to not to just to have usually when you find something like this you find one and it doesn't do you any good here you have enough to do a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of projects man that's cool that is cool I'm not done yet we've got a we've got a wooden box here is it wood or cart yeah it is wood little hobnail box What is in here? That's a neat little box, isn't it? American. Look, just what I was saying. You know, here we have, this is how cheese came. Cheese came in, you know, in a wooden box instead of a cellophane or paper. That's, that's nice. Now that's, a, that's a cool antique right there. That's nice to have in your shop. We have, oh, I can't believe it. Another, oh, and blonde ones. These, as we had last time, these are the 750 Stanley. I'm gonna have enough for my whole set. Let me show you. This is the first one that I've got. These are my favorite chisels. These are the old school, the original Stanley 750s. If you find these at a garage sale, make sure you buy them. Even if they don't have the handles, because oftentimes you'll find the handles uh, separate, and that's exactly what David has sent here, is he's sent the original Stanley handles with the, the leather on the top. Isn't that cool? And so I've got some of these that I don't have handles for, and now I do. These guys here, I don't know what they are. If someone has made these, um, but they're nice handles too, aren't they? They're beautifully made with a hardwood and then a, is that a leather? Very durable. This is an old, old one, old one. And I've used this one. This is my primary chisel, my three quarter inch. I use it more than anything. And I beat on it and beat on it. Look how durable it is and tough. 
Man, that's cool. That's really nice to find. And also, what was in the bag here? We've got some, uh, it looks like more leather working or some sewing, a whole bunch of them, brand new. Some nice braided, uh, what do you call that? Thread in a nice golden color. That golden color is pretty. That would be, that's, uh, I would imagine that could be used for leather work, right? Wow, boy, goodness gracious. This is good. Oh, we got well, two more. We still got more. Oh, here's the punch. So here's the punch that goes with the grommet tool right there. So that's a complete set right there. You know, Brian was really coveting mine, David. When he's really into, he does a lot of crafty stuff. He's really into vintage tools as well. And if you don't mind, I might just pass this on to him. He would really like that. Um, yeah, that's nice to have a full set. Two full sets, that's hard to believe. Looks like we got one more. One more. Oh, this, I, this is, it's very light. It's obviously a box. You guys enjoy these unboxing videos as much as I do? I get to talking so much that I thought I might get all three of them in there. That's not going to happen. We're going to have to do another video, another beautiful box. Look at the finger, the, not the finger joint. What do you call that? Maybe just finger joint. Beautiful box. Oh, we've got some writing on there. What's that say? Wrenches. More, more co pipe wrenches. So this was a pipe wrench, Springfield, Massachusetts. Cool bag. I remember my, uh, I used to hunt geese, goose with geese, goose. Gooses, Canadian honkers, geese with uh, my uncle, uh, and we he would reload. I helped him a few times, uh, and shot used to come in these uh, canvas bags right here. Lawrence brand chilled lead shot, 25 pound number eight shot. There's something inside. Needle bag, isn't it? What in the world is this? Die cast model. There you go. It's a lock. <laughs> it's a it's a lock die. <laughs> it's a locked. It's a Loctite. I see. I don't even have to try to figure out how to fit Loctite into the. <laughs> <laughs> the videos. I don't know. This is some sort of a keychain scraper there. How that that's good. Maybe this. Maybe this will have to work its way into some animations there. A Loctite strength strength at work. A diecast model. It will save the box. What did I do? I didn't lose the box here, did I? <laughs> well, there we go. Is that the original box? Does it say on it? R Renault traffic. No, I don't. I don't. A Renault. I don't. Is that a Renault? This says van, made in Great Britain. Oh, that's that is that is cool, man. Oh man, that. <laughs> what better way to cap off the whole thing than that? The Loctite strength. That... <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Thank you, David. This was so much fun, and this we're only a third of the way through it. So uh, next time we'll uh, we'll do the do one of the other ones, but. Uh, I've got some putting away to do. Thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to click the thumbs up if you enjoy these uh, videos, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.